Hi, everybody. Uh, coming to you from Vancouver on a uh, Thursday, getting into late morning. Today is the day of transition that will take us into the weather pattern that we will be in at least through the day Saturday and to a lesser extent going into Sunday and Monday. If you've looked out your window, I'm sure you have most areas, not all, but most areas are now starting to get a good bit of sunshine. I just grabbed Elk Ridge Golf Course out in Carson in the Gorge, Lewis River up in Woodland, Gearhart by the Sea looking at Tillamook Head uh, along the North Coast. And what I want to take you through, because I find it fascinating, it's a very unique kind of micro slash macro climate to some degree um, that we have in our area. So if you look at the visible satellite picture, Notice Portland started to clear out as expected in the 10 o'clock hour today, basically. And if you look at the clouds, they've cleared until you get down near the south of Salem. And all these clouds going farther south than Eugene will be clearing out as well. There was no marine layer this morning, so the coast has been cleared. And what I really want to point out, and I've circled in red, from the Dalles out through Pendleton and up into Washington and the flats of the Columbia Basin, this is a temperature inversion lockdown. And this is very typical for our area. Today's the first day we're seeing it, um, this particular go around. But temperature inversions typically will lock down the low clouds in these areas, much like we had in the Willamette Valley yesterday. And then as long as the temperature inversion goes, the low cloud deck sets there. So you don't get any warming. Yesterday, for example, in the Willamette Valley, Salem only warmed to 37. It was a low cloud lockdown. This is what happens out in the Columbia Basin. Here's why it's interesting. When you get this low cloud cold weather lockdown, it produces a temperature gradient and it plays a major role in shooting east winds racing through the Columbia River Gorge. Those winds can be 50 miles per hour plus up at Crown Point, can be gusting easily to 40 plus at Troutdale into the, into, uh, the Willamette Valley. And of course, that wind clears out the low clouds, keeps Portland cloud free, can extend all the way off the coast and can keep eventually the entire Willamette Valley cloud free as well. So that's what's going on today. Uh, it's just kind of cool to see it uh, visually taking place. All of this brought to you by this update, the Momentous Wealth podcast, listen on Apple Podcasts, listen on Spotify for a variety of investment topics. Met to educate you. This is put together by the financial firm Momentous Wealth Management. They focus heavily on retirement planning, licensed in Oregon and in Washington. Please check them out if you are in need. Okay, um, here is the gorge. Let's let's go there. I want to talk wind. 44 in Cascade Locks, 37 in Hood River. There has been cloudiness in the gorge. You can see Indian Creek Golf Course and River trying to break up a little bit. Still overcast, misty in 39 in the Dalles. And if you, this is from my website, portlandweather.com, my Columbia River Gorge forecast page. And if you go down here and you click on these current temps, Crown Point's 49, you get the observation list from the past 24 hours. So here's Crown Point, north to east winds gusting to 35 has been well up into the 45 mile per hour range. But the, the point is east winds are certainly coming to life. And if you click on Corbett, you're going to get similar situation. Let, let it load. Now, the, I'm doing the video live, so now it's taking a while. Here we go. This is showing winds gusting to 38, 39, 44 miles per hour. I want to do one more check because I really find this fascinating. Here's Troutdale. Now, yeah, notice Troutdale. No wind. West at three, west of five. So there's wind aloft. You would assume that at some point today that wind aloft is going to mix down all the way to the Columbia River, and then we'll have gusty winds shooting out into Troutdale and East Multnomah County. Sometimes that wind does stay aloft, and it can fool you. So I expect Troutdale, Gresham, Camas, Walshugo to start picking up an east wind today. So far that hasn't happened. Don't be shocked if it doesn't, but I expect it. The east wind's aloft good enough to clear out and bring us the sunshine that we are already getting. So here is the future cast, courtesy of KGW TV. Here's that low cloud lockdown. Notice how everybody clears all the way down to Eugene. This is four o'clock this afternoon. Now you're going to see this low cloud lockdown in the Columbia Basin expand tomorrow. Clouds all the way into Hood River, clouds all the way down into Central Oregon. That will increase the east winds. So let's show what the winds are showing. Uh, okay, this is, I think this is going to, let me see if I can get this to start over. Let me take it back. I hope it's going to start over. 
This is showing 10 o'clock. Okay, so we know this is not right. This is showing 29 mile per hour wind gusts to Trotdale at 10 o'clock this morning. That has not happened. The wind has stayed a lot, but we're going to assume at some point that these winds will mix out and will come down to ground level. And in fact, this model is showing that Trotdale could see gusts of 40, 45 miles per hour during the day tomorrow. Sorry, is, is it not going to play? Come on, play for me. Let's see here. Let me see. Ah, it's not going to play for me. Okay. That was the light winds this morning. Okay, here is uh, tomorrow morning, 43 mile per hour winds. So those are the types of winds in East Multnomah County that will become possible today into tomorrow. Unless we get fooled and the winds stay up high, that can happen. Models say it won't, but we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Anyway, if you don't live in a typical east wind area, if you don't live out near the gorge, your winds will still be fairly light in the coming days. But we think overall, everybody will stay clear tonight in the Willamette Valley and at the coast and again tomorrow. Here's that visible satellite picture of the update that I just showed you. Again, there's that impressive low cloud lockdown. Stops, you start getting clearing about Hood River. Confidence, I would say, is high that eventually this afternoon, all these clouds into Eugene will erode and clear out. You can see some of that erosion from north to south taking place right there. So that's interesting. The overall weather pattern, look at these clouds. Notice how they orientate south to north. That's the weather systems out in the Pacific. Bam! Literally slamming up, up against a high-pressure ridge, what we call an omega blocking high. And those clouds will stay out to the west. So the forecast is still bone dry in terms of measurable precip all the way through Tuesday of this coming week. Uh, now, Mount Hood, this is interesting. Still really mild up there. This, If you round it up, government camp is 50 degrees right now. There's Timberline 43, Meadows 50, Ski Bowl 43 at 5,000 feet. At this time yesterday, Timberline Lodge was in the low 50s. So it's about 10 degrees cooler today. Why? Because that east wind aloft is infecting some colder air up into the mountain. So eventually, even government camp that's at 50 right now, maybe tomorrow... Government camp is only in the mid-40s. You get a little bit colder with that east wind picking up, but it will keep the mountains sunny. Uh, bluebird days, as they say. I've got, well, I need to update this. It looks like government camp is going to be 50 today. Could be 47 tomorrow. Might be uh, cooler. Could be 47 Saturday. Again, might be cooler. Snow levels stay very high through the period as the wind direction will be east today and at least tomorrow. Those winds expected to be not as strong uh, Sunday. So the, the windiest day is going to be tomorrow, Friday, east wind wise. And then they start to ease somewhat Saturday. And by Sunday, the winds might be light enough that we could potentially start getting some pockets of fog in the Willamette Valley in the morning hours again. That's kind of a hard call, a hard call to make. I do want to give you an update on the return to showery weather and the potential of some colder weather the back half of next week. This is the air mass map, 850 millibars, 5,000 feet European model. Here we are this afternoon. Clearly, here's the, watch my cursor. Here's the big ridge, and there's the huge warm air bubble that we are feeding off of. This warm air bubble stays with us all the way into the first part of next week. Here's Tuesday next week. Still warm air bubble. Cold air and purple is settled out across North Carolina, Virginia, and up through New York State. All right, so I think we have a chance of rain. The first chance of rain is Wednesday of next week. There are signs that that Wednesday rain chance might get pushed back. This still shows that we're fairly warm Wednesday of next week, which will be the 21st. And then here comes the cooler weather on Friday the 23rd. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is cold air mass, Friday the 23rd. The surface cold front right now looks to be right over our area, which means... The cold air is just up to our north, but the frontal boundary is overhead. We get a northwest flow, and you would assume it could be a fairly rainy day on Friday. The latest snow level on Friday of next week, I'm looking at my notes, I've got as high as 5,000 feet, all right? And then if I play this into Saturday, now, and then into Sunday, see how the cold air just kind of nips down to us. The front just comes into us, but that would give us rain Saturday and Sunday. This shows that the cold core kind of stays up to our north, which means maybe snow levels get to 4,000 or 3,000 feet, and maybe they don't. But we're definitely on the border of the frontal band 
So you would assume we would have rain again, not this weekend, but next weekend. And let's just keep playing this. See the Euro at one point, this is uh Tuesday, January 27th. At one point, the European model was just dropping all this cold air into us. The American GFS never did. And now look how it absolutely pops and holds off the cold air mass on Wednesday, January 28th. And then it just keeps it up there. Here's a cold front coming in on Sunday, February 1. Nothing overly impressive. We need to get snow levels down to have a big snow event in the Cascades. Fingers crossed the moisture coming in a week from this weekend would at least come with snow levels below Cascade Pass level, below 4,000 feet. But maybe not. It's certainly possible that snow level holds at 5,000 feet. So that's the latest on what I'm looking at the back half of next week. Okay, let's go. Let me update this real quick for the 11 o'clock or 1130 temperatures. 48 now in Portland. I thought when I did KGW Sunrise Show this morning, Portland would be 50 and sunny at noon. It's 48 at 11 o'clock. We're probably going to be 50 and sunny at noon. All right. Colder down in Medford. Remember, they're in that foggy area. It's still foggy down in Eugene right now. This shows Medford getting up to 45 with late day clearing. Saturday, still some early fog. And then sun, 46. And it kind of keeps Medford in that morning fog, afternoon sun pattern with temperatures in the 40s, otherwise all dry. Up in Seattle, look at this sunny forecast. Wow. 50, 51, 51, 50 Sunday. That is nice weather through the weekend and including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Monday up in Seattle. All dry. Okay. What about over in Bend? A lot of sunshine. Wow. Look at that. Overnight lows in the 20s. Daytime highs around 50 all the way into the weekend. 55 on Tuesday of next week. Okay. Pendleton 37 right now. I don't think this forecast is correct. This is from the National Weather Service. This is their automated feed. I think it's cloudy in Pendleton on Friday. Highs only in the 30s. Saturday could still be potentially overcast and temperatures in the 30s. And then maybe starting to get out of that cold air lockdown on Sunday. But you folks, I think, have a good chance of, of staying that way. And the same thing with the Dow's. This shows the Dow's fog and then sun. The Dow's could very easily just stay cloudy in the 30s on Friday and maybe still cloudy in the 30s on Saturday. And then we'll look for the better chance of getting some sun going into the first of the week. And that could include Hood River. Hood River could be in that clo uh, low cloud cold air lockdown, especially tomorrow on Friday as well. So kind of disagreeing with, with what some of the auto modeling is showing there. Certainly sunny at the beach. This shows 57 on Friday. Wow, really nice weather. North Bend, Friday sunny, Saturday sunny, uh, sunny, maybe some patchy fog Sunday, but really nice weather at the beach as well. Here's Eugene. The fog, I think, does eventually clear out this afternoon. And then if you get morning fog, I would think it would clear out tomorrow. And then the same thing on Saturday and Sunday. But, you know, you you get it's still going to be light winds down in the South Valley, so it makes sense that you would have some fog. Salem, I think, has a good chance of waking up sunny on Friday. I'm not positive because your winds will be light, but I think you have a decent chance of waking up sunny on Friday and Saturday. Both days expected to hit 50 or all dry uh, into the first part of next week. Okay. Um, all right. Let's, let's show you Portland's seven-day forecast, and I'll get you out of here. Hazeldell Tire Pros is my sponsor uh, 55 degrees today, 55 tomorrow, pretty much perfectly clear into Saturday at this point for the North Valley and Vancouver with those east winds, breezy to gusty out near the gorge and in other usual east wind spots. Saturday, the winds start to fade a little bit. Maybe there's some patchy fog Sunday morning, but basically this is a sunny 50 plus degree forecast into Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Monday. And for right now, there's a shower chance on Wednesday, although that rain chance might get pushed back. We'll see. I'm Rod Hill. Thanks for watching, and uh, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't, please do. It helps me out, and then you'll be notified when I post if you allow the notifications. Enjoy the sun. I know we need rain. We don't. Well, we don't really need rain. We need mountain snow. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon.